uh, he was going to cover subscap tears. So we'll leave that out right now since we are running short of time and get on to the next, which is the arthroscopic repair for greater tuberosity and lesser tuberosity avulsion fractures. So we know that fixation is the treatment of choice for acute displaced tuberosity fractures, whether it's the greater tuberosity or the lesser tuberosity. And traditionally, we've always done it through an open approach. So if you've got a greater tuberosity fracture, you do it through a deltoid split, similar to a mini open. And if you've got a lesser tuberosity, then you do it through your standard anterior deltopectoral approach. But over the years, an arthroscopic option has also existed. And there's certain advantages over the open for this. So what do you do in an arthroscopic? So it's exactly like a suture bridge repair or a footprint repair. If you've got a piece of bone there, you put a medial anchor here. The sutures go through the junction between the bone and the tendon. They're brought out, and then you put your footprint or your lateral row type of anchor here. So by doing this fixation, you are not going through that bone. So usually these tuberosity avulsion fractures are like a flake. They are cancellous bone, they are weak, and if you try and put a screw, either of two things can happen. Either, either it can get comminuted, or because this is soft cancellous bone, this will get depressed, and you will get a non-anatomic sort of repair. Whereas if you do a suture bridge, you are going through the most strong part, which is the tendon bone junction, and then you are holding it in place while that unites. So let's see the surgical technique. So this is one such patient. So you can see that that's the greater tuberosity avulsion fracture there sitting in the subacromal space. That's the crater. That's the retracted portion there. The cuff is always attached to that piece. And when you go down, this is what it would look like. So we are looking through the postulatal portal. That's the crater. That's the piece. The first thing you want to do is debride. Most of these will have some partial cuff tear fraying. So you want to debride that and then identify the crater. You want the medial most part and the lateral most part to be identified. You then put your two medial row anchors and then start passing the sutures exactly at the bone tendon junction. So unlike a cuff repair where you take it through the cuff, this comes exactly at the junction of that tuberosity with the cuff. And these are all taken in mattress configuration. Then when you give traction, you'll see that that bone piece will sit down perfectly anatomically. Then you tie down the knots of the medial row. And then under vision, you can bring this down into the lateral row. And you need to be at least about 5 to 8 millimeters beyond the crater so that you can get true anatomical reduction. And then under vision, you can tighten each of these sutures individually so that that fragment sits down in the crater and at the same time is not, you know, uh, comminuted because you're not going through it. So that's your piece there. So you'll see the fragment that's then sitting in place. So if you had to actually draw, so you've got a bio anchor there, you've got the suture there going into the lateral row anchor and that's that piece which is then sitting anatomically. If you had to put a screw through that, this will often get depressed and compressed. And again on the CT scan, you'll see that that's that piece which then gets united and then this is the best way to give him a good functional result. So the indications for this, displaced greater tuberosity avulsion fractures. You could also do it in patients who've got anterior dislocation with displaced tuberosity fractures that don't reduce after reduction. You could do it along with a bony bank cart. So you've got bony bank carts which are displaced along with tuberosity avulsion. So you could do this as a single stage and then that's an advantage. We've extended our indications over the years. So now when you've got chronic displaced greater tuberosity avulsion fractures also, which are then stuck in adherent, I think you can do this arthroscopically because you can do a very good release arthroscopically and then bring them down and fix them. We've extended our indications also to these large, moderately displaced greater tuberosity avulsion fractures. So if they are like this, then again you could do this arthroscopically. The only difference is that your distal one will not go beyond. It's too, you know, you can't go beyond the fracture site. So you'd be on either side of that fracture site. And that, again, gives you a good uh, reduction. And uh, as you can see in this union, our contraindications, so patients who have uh, 
you know, uh, fractures associated with that greater tuberosity fracture, I think that would be a contraindication. So associated fractures of the proximal humerus, you certainly don't want to be thinking of an arthroscopic approach. And when you've got these chronic greater tuberosity avulsions with malunion, then again, I don't think you can do an arthroscopic approach because you have to do an osteotomy and arthroscopically to do an osteotomy and then bring it into place is quite a messy affair. So this would be my indication for an open uh, procedure. The lesser tuberosity again is identical and I'll just show you a case for that. So this is a 24 year old young guy, a karate athlete. So he's got a lesser tuberosity avulsion fracture there and that's now three months old and he's got severe subscap weakness. On the MRI, we can see that that's the fragment attached to the subscap. And when you see these coronal views, you'll see that that's the retracted subscap out there. It's isolated. The supra is intact. So arthroscopically, when you go down, you'll see that that's your piece. That's the subscap that's avulsed out there. And this patient also had a significant biceps tendon intraarticular damage, so we've also done, which would almost always be done with these patients, is a biceps stenodesis. So that's the fragment that you'll note, and this is the crater. That's the leading edge of the tendon. And that's the condition of the biceps there. So because it's three months old, here you want to debrief the bone really well. You're going to get down to a good, fresh, bleeding bone. So you debrief the bone fragment, and this I like to do intra-articularly. You then freshen the crater. And in these lesser tuberosities, I think you need to do a dual approach. You need to be glenohumeral and at the same time you need to be subacromial also because if you're doing a footprint, you'll be doing that without disrupting the supraspinatus. So once you've done that, then you go ahead do your bicep stenodesis. So an anchor has gone in there and I've done the bicep stenodesis. And once the bicep stenodesis is done, then the same sort of dual footprint sort of repair. So you've put the medial row anchor on the medial side of the lesser tuberosity. And you've got the sutures going through and you've got the tape going through. So the advantage of the tape again, because it's broad, it's not going to cut through and you don't need to tie it down. And because it's broad, it's going to give you a good surface contact to push that fragment down into position. So this you can actually visualize arthroscopically from the glenohumeral. Then you go to the subacromial and put your footprint anchor there. You need to be beyond the bicipital groove. So the suture I've tied down. So a knot there on the suture and the two tapes above and below. So this gives you the three... Uh, sutures coming down and pushing that entire fragment again into its crater. So as you can note, there's no fixation on that piece. So there's no nothing going through that small piece because that piece will probably get uh, comminuted in the process. So that's your footprint repair for a lesser tuberosity uh, avulsion fracture. And uh, so when you can see, so that's where that, so that's the medial part there. So that's the medial row anchor, then your entire footprint, and then that's your lateral row anchor. So that piece then sits down into place. So arthroscopically, you can do a double row suture bridge. I think this gives you a good anatomical fixation, and it's a very firm uh, fixation, which actually we've reported in the past that has, gives you good radiological union and excellent outcomes.